Welcome back, everybody. So, did you guys miss me? I miss you too. And now it's time to go to our word problems. So far, so good. We've already done items number one to five. Pero, hindi pa tayo matapos. Dahil what you all this, meron tayong six to ten. Pero just to recap, di ba yung members na number one, it's asking kung makana yung principal. And that's why our solution is, yun nga, ito yung sagot. Fiang must deposit 3,800 pesos. Tapos sa number 2, How long will it take Bruce to receive an interest amount of, of 15,000? 5 years. Yan, kasi hindi ba yung last time? I showed you already the answer, pero I didn't write the narrative answer yet. And then sa number 3, 4.39% is, is the value of the interest, effective interest rate. And number 4, what is the ordinary amount and the exact amount? So now I'm already staying in sentence. And then I have to share the difference. Very good. And then last but not least, yung sa number 5. Ayan, di ba yung member kanina? I know naman, we got the wrong answer. Pero ang tamang sugot dyan ay ganyan. Kasi nga di ba yung member, yung ERI, di ba yung member sabi dito, si ARA ay ano yun, ARA San Agustin ay 12% compounded ano yun, annually. So what you can do is to play the effective rate of interest. So, to do this, ito yung ginawa namin. Yan. So, ito yung solution sheet na ginawa ko. So, yung solution ko ay, first, I add, ano yun? I add 1. So, 12% plus 1 becomes 1.12. And then, I take the root of that number, which will lead me to 1.0873735, something like that. And then, I subtract 1. Kasi yun ba yung ERI formula? It's, di ba, you remember, you add 1, divide, then add 1, and then exponent, and then subtract. Now, you're doing the inverse, but I did subtraction first. Dapat add, and then take the root. Di ba, remember, addition is inverse of subtraction. And then we add, and then we root, and then we subtract 1, and then we multiply. Yan, multiply by the compounding period, and we should get, tama, 11.5. That is the Nominal interest rate. Kaya nga, the tamang sagot is, at the end of 80 months, Kim and Ira were able to get the same amounts despite the interest rate charged to them. Despite that, the interest rates charged to them are different. Yes, diba? Because of the effective rate of interest, that's why you, you will still get the same amount kahit na it's compounded annually, pero to hers, it's ano yun? There's a different comparison. So yan. So now we've already done item 5. Now, to continue, we are now going to do items number 6 to 10. So ito na yung item number 6. I'm sure you can't read it because it's in yellow ink. Pero I'll zoom it in para makita mo. Matt Lonzano, along with his peers, has invested 20,000 pesos with an interest rate of 9.6% for 36 months. How much will be the amount in both simple and compound interests? And what is the difference of the two answers? Ayan, so this one's kind of easy. In this situation, all you have to do is to solve for the simple and compound interest of both of the scenarios. So do you remember the formula for simple interest is P times R times T equals I and P plus I equals A. Or the recent formula is T times 1 plus RT equals A. Diba? Kapag sa future value naman, T times 1 plus the R raised to the T power equals A. So, yun ang compound interest. Okay? So, letter A, how much will be the amount in both simple and compound interest? Ito yung solution sheet ko. So, ito yun. Diba yung member ito yung solution sheet ko sa simple interest? So, first, diba yung member, our interest rate is in years. But our time is 36 months. So, we need to convert 36 months to years. So, 1 year's worth 12 months. So, I have to divide by 12, kaya para maging 3, ano yun? 3 years. And then, when I multiply the answer, I'm sorry if you can't see it because it's in yellow ink, the correct answer is supposed to be ano to? Twenty thousand pesos and then 0 0.096, the answer is supposed to be 6,330.65. That is the interest, di ba? Diba yung memory deposit to any thousand pesos, diba? And then your final amount is 26,330 pesos. Yun po yung what you is yung tamang sagot sa civil interest.
Ayan, di ba yung member this is simple? Di ba? I multiply it by the product. I multiply everything by the 3. I multiply everything to the product. You see what I highlight here? That's how I did it. And it made me have an amount of 2,500,760. That is how you do it. At the same time, to get the future value, ito yun sa compound interest. Nalaman mo yung formula? P times 1 plus the rate. Di ba yung member the R is ano yun? 9.6. And that's the one that I got here, di ba? Where is it na kaya? Yan! 0 0.096. And then we raise that to the one, to the third power. What answer did we get? That's the answer. Then we subtract to get the interest. Now, that is the answer for letter A. The answer for letter A is... How much will be the amounts in both simple and compound interest? Yun yung letter A. Ito yun. So that, so that is the answer. The amount in compound interest is 26,330.65 cents and pesos and 65 cents while the or while the simple amount the amount in simple interest will be ano yun? 225,760. So yan, di ba? So yan, so that's my narrative answer that I put here. Ito yung narrative answer na nigay ko. Yan! The amount in simple interest is 25,760 pesos while the amount in compound interest is 26,360 pesos. And then, 230 pesos. And then, di ba yung member, we still need to, ano yun, compute for the difference. So to do that, it's very easy. Just subtract. Ang ginawa ko dito, I subtract the two interests together and the two amounts. So we still get the same. It is the diff so 570.65 pesos is the difference of the two amounts. So yun lang. Number 6 is very easy. Next, number 7. In number 7, here's the problem. Brother J received a final amount of 50,200 pesos on May 14, 2023, with an interest rate of 4.7% 4 4 per annum, the interest amount he received on that day was 8,200 pesos. Using the ordinary time for this problem, letter A, since when has he deposited his money? Ayan! Do I remember in this situation now, it's asking for the date. Do I remember last time ang time? Although it's asking for the time, do I remember ang principal namin? It is anion. Said it's anion. We do not know what is the principal. But it says the final amount is 50,200 pesos. While the, or the interest is 8,200 pesos. So our goal is to solve for the principal. And you know already what to do. That's very easy. And we know that's 42,000. We just subtract. That is the principal. So when, so since when has he invested his money? Because you know, remember, this is the anion. 4.7 per annum, that is the rate. And then, do I remember, he received the final amount on May 14, 2023. Pero, do I remember, it asked for the time. Although the time were given, pero the time given is from this date up to that date. Do I remember, last time we already had that. But now it's asking, since when did it start? Kasi, do I remember, last time what we did, we compute for the number of days within from this date up to that date. Ngayon naman, we're talking about since kailan siya nag-deposit yung money niya. Ito na yung problema. First, going back to Excel, the first thing that we need to do is to solve for the solution, di ba? So, ito na yung ginawa ko. Okay. So, di ba remember, in number 7, first, the principal is we don't know. The rate is 4.7% per annum. The time is blank to May 14, 2023. Kasi nga, do I remember, May 14, 2023, ay yung araw kung kailan siya nakon yung interest at in niya sa principal para magkaroon siya ng final amount. ba? And we know the principal is 42,000 pesos. It's already confirmed. Very easy. You just subtract. It's very easy lang talaga to subtract, no? And you know already the rules. And then, to solve for the time, do I remember now, you're asked to solve for the time. But this is in simple interest. So what do we do? Very easy, di ba? All we have to do is to do interest divide by the 
rate and the principal. So, ito yung ginawa ko. Ang ginawa ko dito ay 8,200 divide by the product of the two numbers. Inhighlight ko product of the two numbers. Or pwede i-slash mo. Para you can get the answer of 4.1540026. Pero ang ginawa ko dito, you might be asking me why there's a 1974. It's because I used the product. And then I divide it so that we can get the same answer din. So yun. <clears throat> okay. So therefore, that is our time. Our time is 4.15 years. Pero, remember, that is the time interval. Di ba, remember, ang tanong na tinanong ko, since when? Kailan siya nagsimula yung deposit niya? So therefore, that 4.15 years is not the right answer. That is just to asking how long. Although to some people, they might say, ano yun, this is already the final answer, but it's not. The question is, since when? Kailan siya nagsimula? Like for example, di ba yung, like for example, yung, ano yun, for example, yung martial law ni, ni Marcos, di ba yung member? It lasted for 20 years. It lasted for 14 years. Di ba? And then, di ba? And then it ended on 1986. Since when did it start? Edi 1972, di ba? So, yan. So, you need to subtract. Because, di ba, remember, you're given a time interval, which is the one you saw for, and you were given the, the time when it was done. So, we need to get the first action. So, to get the first action, the final action minus the the time interval. So, ito na yung ginawa ko. First, I did conversion. Remember that one year is worth 12 months. As you can see here. Can you follow? Yan. One year is 12 months. So, di ba yung memory 4.15? That is, ano yun? Yung 4.15, I minus 4 because we already have one year. So, we need to convert the, the decimal. So, from the decimal, we convert that to months. So, ito yung ginawa ko. Minus it by the whole number and we should get this. And then this one, I multiply this by 12. And we should get 1.84 months. So, one month. And then, we have one month and it's equivalent to 30 days. Because we are using ordinary time. Kasi nga, you're very lucky in this problem. We're not using exact time. So, it's ordinary time that we're using here. So, therefore, one month is worth 30 days. So, 0.84 times 30 equals 25.44 days. Diba? And then, this is the calendar. So, you have May 4, 2023. And then, we subtract by the time interval, which is 4 years. That's why we did time conversion, so that we can get the months. How many months in, dec in the decimal? And how many days? And there are 25 days. So, 14 minus 25 cannot be. So, you're gonna have to replace. Replenish 30 days from April. So, that becomes 44 and then for April, and then 2023. And then we subtract. And doing this will give you 2019, March 19. So therefore, since when did Brother J has deposited his money? Brother J has deposited his money since March 19, 2019. Yun. So that is the answer in letter A. The answer in letter A is March 19, 2019. Yan. That is the first answer. Now, for my second question, we're still not yet done. Kasi po, this also implies compound interest. Di ba, remember you thought kasi simple interest lang to, kaya naman madali. Pero hang on, may isa pa akong tanong dyan. And that is, how much is the interest he received on the end of the day transaction if it were compounded semi-annually? Ayan, this time, we are now using compound interest. Di ba, remember last time, sa letter A, we are asked to solve for the time. And that's in simple interest. Ngayon naman, we are going to play the same thing din, but this time using compound interest. That's why you're asked to solve for the time unit. And then, you remember sa letter A, you're asked to find out kung kailan siya nagsimula ng, ng, ng de, de, date of deposit the, depositing the money. Ngayon, we are going to use compound interest. Such that based on the answer or the time interval that you got kanina, sa bagsahanap ng time, sa simple interest, Na yun, gagamitin mo yun sa compound interest. Yan. At ito na yung solution sheet ko. Ganito kasi yun. So, di ba remember, you, are, you still have the same principal. Your same principal, your same rate, 
your time, ayan, di ba yung your time? Your time is the one you should get from, ano yun, from kanina pa. Take note, if you get the requisite answer wrong, automatic wrong na yan. Okay, that's why you have to get letter A right in order for you to get letter B right. So now, this is what happened. You might be asking me kung bakit may 1,495 doon. Well, here's why. So, I summed up B of 1,114. Ito yun. Do I remember that's 4 months times 360 days? And then, 1 month times 30. And then, plus 25. So, we're supposed to get this answer. And then, it's compounded semi-annually. And to do this, ito yung ginawa ko. So, the first thing is, I divide. R divide by C. Di ba? And that is 0 0.47 divided by 2. And we should get 0 0.025. Now, we add 1. Very easy lang to, di ba? And then from there, we raise it to the exponent. Pero what's the value of the exponent? Good question. Ang value ng exponent ay 4.15 years. Do I remember that's the one when we divide 360? We should get that answer. Do I remember we got that answer kanina? 4.14, 5. Pero what you all this, although the other decimals, farther to it, are, ano yun, were other numbers, okay lang yun. Basta we just round off up to two decimal digits lang. So yan. And that part, when we raise that to the, ano yun, we raise it to the exponent. And that is this this item raised to the times 2. And then it's being raised. So we should get this answer. And then we multiply with the principal to get 50,937 pesos. And that is our final amount in compound interest. Kung sa tingin mo sa simple interest, it's 50,200 5, 50, pesos. Na yan naman sa compound interest, 50,937 pesos. Pero tanong dyan, what is the interest? Yun lang, kadali. I-subtract mo, di ba? So, subtract from the future value minus the present value and you should get that answer. Di ba? That's it. And then, the answer is, ito yung sagot ko. The answer is, yan. Brother J has deposited his money since March 19, 2019. If compound interest were implied and charged semi-annually, Brother J will receive 8,937.13 pesos as interest. Yan. So that is the correct answer. Okay? Where I have to merge this. Kasi nga, diba, remember, this is not anion. This is anion. So you have to merge and center. Yan, okay? Tsaka, this is supposed to be in comma. Yun lang. Very easy. Next, number 8. Ito yun. This is a stocks and bonds. This is a stocks and bonds problem. Let's read the problem together. I am helping out doing a lot of work at Sam and Addy's bake shop. Sam and Addy, together with Jago, make a total of 50 bonds all in all together. My other cousins help me identify the following. Matsi says that the par value is 38,800 pesos. Sabi says that 7.5% is the coupon rate. My satanic cousin Samantha says that the value of the commission is square root of the par value. According to PenPen, Pen, the bonds pay interest 480 days since the last interest day of transaction. And Atsi Maika says that the current market price is 40,000 pesos. Now what is the total purchase price for all of this work? That's very easy. It implies the three steps of stocks and bonds. So let's just do this. Do I remember the first step is to solve for the accrued interest. To solve for the accrued interest, it's P times R times T. Pero ano yung T? Ang T ay yung term. Pero what's the term? Do I remember it says there, 480 days since the last transaction. So you're gonna have to convert that. So that to make it one year because you have 480 days, so you're going to have to divide it by 360, which will make 1.333 in a bunch of threes. And when you do that, we multiply everything all together, just the what I did there, and we should come up with this answer of 3,380. Next, the next step is to call, solve for the, the price per bond. To solve for the price per bond, you have to add the accrued interest with the commission and the and the current market price. So the commission is to take the square root of our par value, which is 38,800 pesos. And when we do that, we're supposed to get ito yun. So we take the square root of this answer here. Diba? SQRT is short for square root. And you should get, ano yun? 196.97.
and then he and then he summed it up all together to get this answer here. So I summed everything. Nilalagay ko yung tatlo tapos isum ko, and we should get four me forty four thousand seventy six pesos as the price per bond. Now we are gonna solve for the total purchase price. To solve for the total purchase price, kadilam yan. I multiply with the total number of bonds, and that is the number fifty two. So product that, and you're supposed to get. Two million two hundred ninety-two thousand two pesos and eighty-one cents. So therefore, our final answer is: after all this hard work that me and my cousins have done, we have made a final total purchase price of two million two hundred ninety-two thousand two pesos and eighty-one cents. Nyo lang, very easy, de ba? And that's item number thirty-eight. Padali lang yan. You just have to apply the step. Nayon naman, let's go to item number nine. In item number nine, sabi dito. Barbie Ragdoll's company has made a total purchase price of one million two hundred fifty-seven thousand six hundred pesos at after eight months of transaction loan period. Because of all the hard work they've done, or that they've done, they forgot how much was which. Ayan. So the boy man in this problem now, the boy remember last time sa item number eight, you're gonna have to solve for the total purchase price. Nayon, the total purchase price is given, and now you're gonna have to solve for the given following. Pero here the given following. It says here that the ask ask it says that the coupon rate is fourteen point seven five percent. Yan, coupon rate. Antonet says that the price per bond was supposed to be eight thousand eight hundred eighty four, eight thousand three hundred forty four eighty four times the number divided by three. Di ba? According to Zara, the current market price is equivalent to the product of five squared and cube of a number. Five squared and cube of a number. That means five squared is twenty-five, and cube of a number it means x cube. Elijah remembered that the, they were supposed to have they were supposed to have fifty-nine times x squared divided by three as the value of the accrued interest. Lastly. Patricia says that the value of the commission was two times seven x being quantity squared, and everything's being divided by x. Make a list to help them compute for the missing info. Ayan, this is a bit tough, although it's still easy because you know, naman, it's it's still anion, the stocks and bonds problem. Pero the one we did kanina, that was a very easy problem. Nayon, it's getting it's harder because you're now going to solve for the value of x. And this one is in implying algebra. So now let's go to the item number 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 nine. So do I remember we have our par value? Okay. So yan our par value. Wala tayong alam ng par value. So we need to solve for the par value. Ang coupon rate ng sabi ni ano yon? Ano yon? Do I remember sabi dito? After eight months of transaction loan period. Ito yun. Eight months of transaction. Nilagay ko dito dito sa time and term. Ang what you call is ang total purchase price and why one million two hundred fifty seven thousand six hundred. And then yun yah the the eight the hard work this the coupon rate of fourteen point seventy five percent that's in the rate. And then the accrued interest is this. Do I remember the accrued interest? It's fifty nine times x squared divided by three. Ito yun fifty nine x squared divided by three. Yan. So this one comes first and then divide by three. That is the accrued interest. And then if I remember, we have the ano yon the commission, the current market price. If I remember, the current market price is the product of five squared and cube of a number. Yan, di ba? Try it here. Five squared is twenty-five and cube of a number, which is twenty-five x cube, di ba? And then the commission is ano yung sabi dito sa commission? The commission is. Two times seven x squared all divided by x. So ito yun. Ito yung commission. Yan. So that is the commission. So seven x and then you raise it to the second power. So therefore it's being distributed. And then the two is being distributed too. Yan. So we distribute the exponent. Do you remember applying the laws of exponents? If you have factors inside the parentheses and it's being raised to that exponent, we can just simply distribute the exponent. Like for example, you have three times four. And then three times three, and then being raised to the fourth power, di ba? Three, you can distribute the four, make it three times four, 
3 raised to the 4th power and 3 to the 4th power. Or you can just do 3 times 3, which is 9 raised to the 4th power. Diba? So that implies the loss of exponents. So now, that's what we're gonna do. We distribute that and we get 49x x squared. We're multiplying by 2 to get 98x squared. Last but not least, the price per bond is this one. 8,384x divided by 3. Diba? Pero, diba remember, in this type of situation, our job is to solve for x. So therefore, this is a rational equation. Because, diba remember, we do not know what is the value of the accrued interest. We do not know what is the value of the current market price. We do not know what is the value of the commission and the price per bond. So this implies algebra and rational equations. So now let's do the rational math. So the bottom member thing rational equations na ginawa ko. Ito yung ginawa ko dito sa solution sheet. The bottom member this one here yung naka black that is the accrued interest. The one in blue that is the commission. The one in sky blue is the current market price and it's equivalent to the one in yellow which is the the price per bond. So that is what we have. So, do I remember, we add this up all together to get the price per bond. Accrued interest, current market price, and commission. Pero, do I remember, we have denominators. So, what we do now, especially that we have a, den a variable in the denominator, we apply the LCD. So, what do you think is the LCD in this situation? If your answer is 3x, you are correct. How do you know it's 3x? Get into kasi yun. 3 times x times 1 times 3. So, 3x. So, that is our LCD. Now, we multiply everything by the LCD of 3x. So, yan. So, this particular situation, you nga, di ba, remember this what I did here, di ba? In this part, the 3's cancel. 3 and 59x, they cancel. And then, x times x becomes x cubed. So, it becomes 59x cubed. All right? And then, the by remember, we have 98x squared times 3x. The x cancels, and then you're going to have to multiply it by 3 to give you 294. It, that's what I did in scratch paper. 98 times 3 to give you 294. And then the third one, 25x cubed, since we don't have a denominator, we have to multiply that by 3x. So 25 times 3 is 75x. 75. Pair x times x cubed is x raised to the fourth. Wow! Malaki na yan! A high power! And last but not least, 8,384 x divided by 3. The 3's cancel and you're just left with x squared na lang. And this is how the equation will go. So yan! At least now, all denominators have already been eliminated. Now, all we have to do is to combine like terms. Ito yung ginawa ko dito. So, in my solution sheet here, I put the numerator on top and the denominator on the bottom. So, yan. And then, this one, what I, ang ginawa ko dito, I multiply with the LCD, which is 3x. So, yan. Diba, remember, they cancel, diba? And then, after I multiply with LCDs, we eliminate the denominators. So, therefore, we have 59x cubed, and then we have 75x raised to the fourth, and then we have 294x squared, and then, our, and then everything's equal to 8,384 squared. And now what we do? Now we can already combine like terms. So now we combine like terms and this is what we're gonna do. So ito na yun. Diba remember, I subtract 8,384 on both sides. And we should get this answer of 8,090. So, how did I get that answer? Can it take us yun? 294 minus 8,384. So, yun po yung ginawa ko dito. So, I subtract. So, that I can set it equal to 0. And that's supposed to be the answer. Diba? Now, we've already set it equal to 0. Pero, diba remember, we are supposed to get 0 here. E kaso, look! We have an x that is being raised to the fourth power. And that's the highest that we have. And normally, we cannot solve for variable of x like that. So therefore, it would be better if we just simplify. So how do we simplify that? 
if your answer is factoring, you are correct. We can factor out something to make a, to make it more simplified and more easier. How can you factor that? How can you factor the numbers? What is, do you think is the GCF? The GCF is to factor out an x squared. How do you know? Because if I remember, if you look here, we have x raised to the fourth power. In here, we have x raised to the cube. In here, we have x raised to the squared. So we can factor out x squared. X squared. So that leaves us with 75x squared, 59x, and, and negative 8,019 and and, and, good for, and good for us. You know why? We're now back to base. Back to normal, simplified quadratic equations. Diba? So now we can do the solving for the quadratic equation. Pero, I have a problem now because they're very big numbers. So what do we do now in this situation? Remember, our a is not equivalent to 1. And if our a is not equivalent to 1, what do we do? We multiply a times c. So 75 times 8, negative 8,090. And what answer did we get? You need to get ko. And we're supposed to get negative 606,750. That really is a big number. The question is, what two numbers that multiply together that yield you this number of negative 606,750 and at the same time, which add or subtract to give you the answer of 59? Any guesses? I think that's a big number. Pero, this is what we're going to do to simplify it. To simplify the number, we're going to have to divide it by 75 first. So, when we try dividing by 75, kasi nito ba remember? We tried multiplying that by 75 x squared, and that becomes negative 8,090. So, we're going to have to divide that by 75. So, our answer should be divided by 75. And what answer do we get? We get negative. Yun nga. So tama. And then we can also factor this down by dividing it by 10. Diba? Yeah. So we have negative 809. And I think that can, do you know, that 75 times 10 to give you 750. So that's supposed to be 750. Do you think that when we add these two numbers together, they make a cohesion to a 59? Yes. And how is that? Ganito kasi yun. Do I remember these are the two numbers that I multiply? 809 and negative 750. So when I multiply these two numbers together, we're supposed to get the answer of negative 606,750. Diba? Pero what two numbers that you can divide, that you multiply to get you that answer, and add to give you positive, 69, positive 59. And that's 809 and, and 750. Yes, because these two numbers, that when you multiply together, they give you that answer of negative 606. Pero, you need to get 59. So, how do we do that? First, we need to divide by the number that we multiply. And then, we, we got the answer of negative 8,090. So, I try dividing it by 10, and we get a negative 809. So, I think what you want is based on how much we divide, that is how much we're multiplying on the other side. So we got we so we have 809 on the left side and negative 750 on the right side or either way. So 8, 809 minus 750 is tama. 59. So therefore that is the right answer. But we're still not done. Because you know by remember we still need to factor this out. Okay? So now we already have x plus 809 times x minus 750 equals 0. So we need to divide. Or you can divide and slide. Because you know, remember, since our x is greater than our a is greater than one, so we're gonna have to divide and slide. So we need to divide it by the, the by the by the a on both sides. So 809 divided by 75, since it can be divisible, we slide it down. And for negative 750, it can be divisible by 75. So therefore, it can be divisible, and which gives us negative 10. So therefore, the answer is 10. So I want to get the whole number, not the fraction. Because when I made the problem, I want the whole number. So yeah. Another way that you can do this is to rewrite it in expanded form for the middle term. And then you can factor out. And they said now that if you get both identical factored out factors, you're doing it correctly. So therefore, the correct answer is 75x plus 809 times x minus 10. And now we can solve for both of the answers. 
So, ito na yung ginawa ko. Factoring out and solving for x. And to solve for x, ito yung ginawa ko. So, I start with 75 plus 809. Subtracting 809 on both sides, you get negative 809. And then divide both sides by 75, you should get negative, ano yun? Negative 10.78. That is the answer in, in 75x plus 809. Ngayon naman, we already have x minus 10. And the answer is simply positive 10. Madali lang yan. Now to check. So we check our solutions to see if we get the right answer. If we get the right answer, correct. Is that correct? Let's try x is 10. So when I did that, I did it this way. 59 times 10 squared divided by 3. And we're supposed to get 1,966.67. This one here, this is the current market price. The current market price is... 5 squared times 10 cubed. And 5 squared is 25. 10 cubed is 1,000. 25 times 1,000 is 25,000. Yan. Now, on the last one, we have, ano yun? 98. We have, ano yun? 98x squared. So, therefore, we got 980. So, tama. And then, divide by? Divide by 1. And we should get 980. And then, if verification... Yeah, and then we sum everything up to see if we get the right answer. We sum everything up, and yun nga. The correct answer is supposed to be 27,946.67 pesos. Now, I try the if formula to see if it's correct. So, ang ginawa ko ay if, then logical test. If, what is the logical test that I implied here? If the cell here, the, what you, the cell, if verification, the cell that I clicked on here, is equivalent to... This guy to the answer of the ano yun, the mark the current market price, which is eight thousand three hundred eighty four times ten divided by three, and then comma. If it's correct, I type correct. I type correct. If it's wrong, I type try again. And the answer that we get is correct. Now we try the other side, the man. Of course, we will also get that answer, but we can accept negative money here. So, therefore, we only get the positive 1. So, therefore, our only answer is 10. So, that's the value of x. So, now we have already found out that our, our accrued interest is 1,966.67. So, ito yun. So, this is what happened here. Okay? So, now we've already solved this problem. This is supposed to be the correct answer. Yan. Now... So, so for the total number of bonds, if I remember, price per bond times the number of bonds equals the total purchase price. So, ang ginawa ko, i-divide ko. And we're supposed to get 45 bonds altogether. So, yan. Dividing from the total purchase price, divide by the price per bond, and you should get the total number of bonds. At the same time, you want to get the, the, the coupon rate. The coupon rate is very easy. Just get the percent, and then divide by 100. At the same time, yung time and term, you need to get 8 months of transaction. So, remember, 8 months of transaction is 8 divided by 12. How do you know? Because we are using months. So, therefore, it's 8 divided by 12. And you are supposed to get 0 0.67. And now, we can solve for the par value. To solve for the par value, it's very easy. Just divide. You remember that P times R times C equals I. But now, if you want to get the par value... It's division, division. You can divide I and time and coupon rate. Or you can just multiply the two things together, the rate and the term, and then divide from the acute interest to get the par value of 20,000 pesos. So, yan. And that is the correct answer. So, yun na yung tanong sagot. Par value, 20,000 pesos. Number of bonds, 45 bonds. Price per bond, 27,946.67. Yun lang. Now it's time for the last problem. Good luck. For last, or maybe we'll just have to wait for the next video.